Good morning and welcome to St Michael and All Angels Parish Church for our worship this morning on this Sunday the 12th of July and uh, today is also dedication day for St Michael, it's when we remember the dedication of this building. Uh, and I'm joined by someone different today, I'm joined by Lauren, a uh, member of our youth group and it's great to have another face joining me. Uh, how's lockdown been for you Lauren? It's had its ups and downs, I've um, really enjoyed spending more time with my family Although that has been hindered by the amount of work we've had to do at home, um, but overall it's been quite good. Great, so uh, stop what going on, I've been setting you a lot of work. Yes. But you finished school, right? Finally, it's all over and done with, and I'm glad that it's all out of the way, but it's a shame that I haven't been able to do my exams. Yeah, and you missed prom as well. Yes. Yeah. However, we did do a family prom, Great. which was lovely, spending time with everyone. Good, so the dress didn't go to waste. No. Good. So that's presumably a bit of a highlight of the last few months. Are Definitely. there any others? Um, I've been able to spend, as I say, more time with my family. In fact, so much that we've had family quiz nights. Okay. Um, speaking to family from all across the world. I've started speaking to people I'd never even met before from places like South Africa. So Brilliant. it's been really fun. So you've got a lot of family around the world then? Yes. Great. Well, thanks for joining me. Uh, as I said, today is a dedication Sunday, so um, normally the flower club go to great lengths to make the church look brilliant, um, which is why we've got a few flower displays in the background, so thank you to those select few of the flower club that came and uh, did some flowers uh, today. Uh, and uh, we celebrate the fact that uh, just over 110 years ago, uh, some people in Bramwell had a vision to build a church here, originally called a mission church, uh, and it grew and it grew uh, to need a building such as this. So um, today we give thanks for their ministry. As we also think about well, what is church going to look like uh, in 2020 as we recover from this uh, pandemic. But I'm going to hand over to Lauren to lead us in our opening responses. To young and to old, we, we welcome, welcome you. you. To rich and to poor, we, we welcome, welcome you. To loud and to quiet, we, we welcome you. you. To regular and to visitor, we, we welcome you. To happy and to sad, we, we welcome you. To God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, we, we welcome you. We will now sing together, Lord for the years. <laughs>
our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. We are a temple of God's indwelling Holy Spirit, yet we have grieved him. The temple of our bodies does not belong to us, but was brought at the price of Christ's precious blood. So we come in sorrow, but with confidence to ask forgiveness of our Father in heaven. Lord God, our maker and our redeemer, this is your world and we are your people. Come among us and save us. We have willfully misused your gifts of creation. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have seen the ill treatment of others and have not gone to their aid. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have condoned evil and dishonesty and failed to strive for justice. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have heard the good news of Christ, but have failed to share it with others. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. We have not loved you with our whole heart nor our neighbours as ourselves. Lord, be merciful. Forgive us our sin. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to hear God's word, let us pray. Almighty God, to whose glory we celebrate the dedication of this house of prayer, we praise you for the many blessings you have given to those who worship you here. And we pray that all who seek you in this place may find you and being filled with the Holy Spirit may become a living temple acceptable to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we sing together. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you. Oh 
majestic love and authority, words of power that can never fail, let their truth prevail over unbelief. grasp the heights of your plans for us. Truths unchanged from the dawn of time that will echo down through eternity. And by grace we'll stand on your promises. And by faith We'll walk as you walk with us. Speak, O oh Lord, till your church is built and the earth is filled with your glory. Early in the morning, Joshua and all the Israelites set out from Shittim and went to the Jordan, where they camped before crossing over. After three days, the officers went throughout the camp, giving orders to the people. When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. Then you will know which way to go, since you have not been this way before but keep a distance of about 2,000 cubits between you and the ark. Do not go near it. Joshua told the people, Consecrate yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. Joshua said to the priests, Take up the ark of the covenant and pass on ahead of the people. So they took it up and went ahead of them. And the Lord said to Joshua, Today I will begin to exalt you in the eyes of all of Israel so they may know that I am with you as I was with Moses. Tell the priests who carry the Ark of the Covenant, when you reach the edge of the Jordan's waters, go and stand in the river. Joshua said to the Israelites, Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. This is how you will know that the living God is among you and that he will certainly drive out before you the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and Jebusites. See, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of all the earth will go into the Jordan ahead of you. Now then, choose twelve men from each of the tribes of Israel, and as soon as the priests who carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, set foot in the Jordan, its waters flowing downstream will be cut off and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. Now the Jordan is at flood stage all during harvest, yet as soon as the priests who carried the Ark reached the Jordan and their feet touched the water's edge, the water from upstream stopped flowing. It piled up in a heap a great distance away, at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zerathan. While the water flowing down to the Sea of Araba, that is, the Dead Sea, was completely cut off. So the people crossed over opposite Jericho. The priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan and stood on dry ground, while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Last week, Mark spoke to us about the spies entering into Jericho to search out the land and to prepare for the invasion of God's people. And today we pick up the story back in Israel's camp, the other side of the Jordan, in that land that wasn't the promised land. And God is telling Joshua to prepare to move, prepare to invade the land that he had promised for them. And he gives quite detailed instructions. 
He says that all the people are to go into the land, but that the uh, that God is to go forward in front of them. For uh, the Israelites had something called the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant was where the presence of God rested. It was the centre, if you like, of all their worship because it represented God. And if you read throughout the Old Testament, God's spirit dwell, uh, the presence of God dwell in the Ark of the Covenant. And so God tells uh, Joshua to tell the people to get ready, to be prepared to invade this strange new land, the land that God had promised them. And he says, I will go before you. And so they get ready early in the morning and then the priests whose job it was to carry the Ark of the Covenant, uh, they pick the Ark of the Covenant up with great solemnity and they walk towards the edge of the Promised Land. The Promised Land's uh, edge was the River Jordan. Uh, much like uh, if you go to the coast, you come to the border of the United Kingdom. So the River Jordan was the boundary of the Promised Land. And the Israelites had journeyed for many generations to get there. And as if by coincidence, it's like they timed it perfectly. They arrived at the Jordan when it was in flood. It had been rainy season and so the flooding of the Jordan was in place, a way in which the crops uh, would then also uh, get watered. But it meant that the Jordan was quite a difficult river to cross at this time. God says to Joshua, I'm going to perform in front of your people a miracle like I did with Moses. I'm going to allow you to cross through the Jordan on dry ground so that people might remember the stories of their ancestors leaving Egypt through the, the Red Sea on dry ground. And they will know that I am with you as I was with Moses. And so the priests lead the people to the edge of the River Jordan. And as the priests step into water, the water stops flowing. We're told it's all piled up in one place. Oh, what an image. And the people walk through on dry ground. If we had had a slightly longer reading, which I thought might have been um, a bit too much, we would have read about uh, chapter 4. And Joshua commands each of the 12 tribes of Israel to lay up a stone in the middle of the river whilst it's still dry ground as a memorial for the fact that the Israelites passed into the promised land on dry ground. What an appropriate reading uh, for this day in our church life. And so I think there are, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, I think there are a couple of lessons that we can take from this. The first of all is those stones Joshua instructs the tribes of Israel to lay up 12 stones to remember their passing through uh, the River Jordan. This building, the building I'm sat in, the building many of you walk by, the building uh, we long to come back and worship within, are stones piled up in a certain way to proclaim the glory of God, proclaim the people of God coming to worship together, to proclaim their faithfulness over the last century. They're a reminder of all of that. But as people walked past those 12 stones on the edge of the promised land uh, in future years, it would have been a reminder to them of all of God's promises to them. And so these stones stand, this building stands as a promise of God's faithfulness to us and as a call to worship a call to prayer and a call to be the community of God, the people of God, living faithful Christian lives. This building, these walls, these stones are of great significance to us. Maybe now so more than ever, as we've had the privilege of being able to freely worship in here as a large community taken from us for who knows how long. The other lesson I think we can take is from what happened earlier on. Mark talked to us last hat week about how Rahab came to faith. But for Rahab to come to faith, she had to engage with some of God's people. Joshua, knowing that Jericho was quite a powerful city, and Mark spoke to us about that last week, so if you want to learn more about that, go and watch last week's service again. Um, 
but they knew it was a powerful enemy. And Joshua wanted to find out a bit more about the people of Jericho before they crossed over the river of Jordan. So they sent out spies. Those spies were sent out to test the land, to see where the strongholds were, to see where the weaknesses were, to see where Israel would be vulnerable and to see where Israel would be strafe, uh, safe, to work out a plan of attack for Jericho. They were sent as spies. Now you would only ever send out people that could conceal themselves, people that were strong enough, uh, people that were wise in searching things out and not being caught. They did all that work, they didn't get caught because Rahab helped them. They made promises to Rahab and then they returned to the safety of the camp of Israel. Has anyone guessed where I'm going with this yet? As we look to take back our building, if you like, as we look to take back some sense of normality in life, as we look to come back together again in worship, I'm aware that there are many of you who are fearful. I've spoken to a number of you who say you're not quite ready to put yourself in a place of potential danger yet. I've spoken to a few of you who say you're not sure whether church is safe. I can tell you from my own experience that this building and this place, even filled with our maximum number of people, which is 36, is far safer than somewhere like Not Cuts. Um, not Cuts is a great place, I'm not doing them uh, any disservice. But when I went to Not Cuts, social distancing wasn't in place. Um, people were just walking up to me and around me. That isn't gonna happen here. Sorry for the product placement. We have sent people out ahead of us, ahead of you, to make this building safe. I've spent who knows how many hours uh, doing stuff in here to make it safe. We have written all sorts of processes and risk assessments to ensure the place stays safe. And I give and others give of their time uh, every week to do deep cleans and make sure the place is clean. We have sent people ahead of us. We've sent an advance guard ahead of us to prepare the way so that the people of God can follow and can return to faithful communal worship. Israel faced challenges as it entered into the promised land. We too, no doubt, will face challenges. But God said to the people of Israel, go into the promised land and I'm going to go ahead of you. He didn't say, you go first and I'll follow at a safe distance. He says, come, let's go and I'm going first, follow me. The Israelites followed the presence of God in the Ark of the Covenant. We follow the presence of God that lives in our hearts. God has said, go. God has said, come. And I go with you. I walk life with you. And so as we begin to work out what a new pattern of communal worship for St Michael's will look like, as we begin to resume that, there is a call upon us as God's faithful people to trust each other, to trust each other to make our worship safe, to trust each other to be faithful to God, and to trust each other that we can depend both on God's and upon ourselves that we do think safely. And so on this dedication Sunday, this building stands as testament to the faithfulness of people before who went through many challenges, maybe not a pandemic, but they've been through many recessions, They've been through strikes and all sorts of other difficulties and that did not stop them worshipping. We have a duty as the parish church of Bramall to lead people safely into a new period of time in our community and our nation. We have a duty to be the example 
of how to do community safely with social distancing. I pray for the day we don't have to do social distancing, but obviously we do it because we have to be safe. So take courage at the story of the people of God entering into the promised land and take it as an encouragement too of God calling us into the promised land, which is worship and life together post pandemic. And trust those people that have gone before you who are saying it's safe to do so. That we might one day be able to come back together safely without excuses and faithfully worship the Lord our God together with great joy, passion and love. Amen.
Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ, Christ died, died for our sins in, in accordance, accordance with, with the scriptures. He was buried, he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We come to the point in our service where we make intercession. And so today, on this dedication Sunday, we remember uh, this building that Laura and I are sat in, um, and Kathy as well behind the camera. Uh, as we sit in this building, uh, we invite you to join us as we give thanks for the work of those who helped build this church and for those who have sustained it over the years. And uh, Laura and I are going to be joined by some familiar faces, hopefully, uh, throughout these prayers too. So let us pray. The risen Christ is here in the midst of us. We bring our prayers to him as Lord of the Church. For the universal Church, of which these buildings are a visible symbol. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For our church congregations, as we remember your promise, that when two or three are gathered in your name, you are there in the midst of them, even through the digital sphere. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For our church and our homes that have become places of worship, that we may be still and know that you are God. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the fulfilling of our desires and petitions as you see best for us, Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For our blessings in the past and for our visions in the future, Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the gift of the Holy Spirit and new life in baptism, Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the pardon of our sins when we fall short of your glory. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For a foretaste of your eternal kingdom in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Lord, receive our thanks and praise. For the blessing of our vows and the crowning of our years with your goodness. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the faith of those who have gone before us and for the grace to persevere like them. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the benefactors of our church who have died in the peace of Christ and are at rest. Lord, receive our thanks and prayer. For the sense of our fellowship with Saint Michael, the Archangel and all your saints, Lord receive our thanks and prayer. O oh God, from living stones you prepare an everlasting dwelling place for your majesty. Grant that in the power of the Holy Spirit those who serve you here may always be kept within your presence. This we pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, time for a weekly challenge. You might be thinking, well, I've not seen my Jericho yet. Hold on, they are coming. I wanted to give a little bit more time for people to build their Jerichos and send them to me, but you will see them next week. Your challenge for this week, though, is um, something to do with lockdown. Uh, Lauren's already talked about 
uh, her experience of lockdown and meeting family all over the world and not being able to sit her exams uh, and spending time with family and so on. What's your story of lockdown? My story is spending more and more time with Samuel, which has been great, but it's also been a story that's included quite a few funerals and sadness and uh, lots of writing of risk assessments too. What's your story been? As the UK moves out of lockdown and as the government looks to try and normalise life a bit, um, what was lockdown will move into history. In the future, generations will learn of the coronavirus pandemic of 2019 and 2020. And it's important that our stories are written down, are there for people to learn and know of, so that it's not just this generic uh, story of what happened, but that individual lives, stories are told. So I want to encourage you this week, whatever your story of the last few months has been, whether it's been loneliness, or whether it's been excitement of picking up a new hobby, or whether it's been going out walking and discovering places in Brown and beyond that you never knew were there, write it down. And if you don't like writing a, a poem or a letter, why not draw something or paint something or make something or find a picture you've taken. And let's find a way of bringing these together uh, that St Michael's story of lockdown uh, might be recorded and might live on for future generations. If anyone has any ideas about how we might collate all those stories together, uh, do get in touch. But yeah, I think it's really important that we record our story of lockdown uh, so that future generations know what it was like here in Rumble and here in this church as well. As we start to conclude our service this morning on Dedication Sunday, we sing together, we have a gospel to proclaim.
Whilst in this building we normally meet and we pray together as a large community, we can't do that due to lockdown. However, we can still pray together through the medium of video. So why don't we give thanks for everything that we have. Good Shepherd of all of us. You have been our guide. Keep us loyal to our past. And prepare us for our future. Keep us trusting and hopeful. Ready to embrace your kingdom as it comes. For all that has been. Thanks. For all that shall be. Yes. Thank you, Lauren, for joining me this morning and helping lead a service. It's good to have someone with me and to not just be the focus of the camera. And as we go out into the rest of this day, as God's people, we go with his blessing. Christ, whose glory is in the heavens, fill this house and illuminate your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and all those you love now and always. Amen. Whatever you're doing for the rest of this day and even the rest of the week, uh, take care and see you soon. God bless.